And now a moment from Your History and Health Starts First with Dr. Richard Brown. Hello, welcome to the podcast, to my podcast. This is the podcast on health, health disparities, and health services administration. Glad to be with you again. So the last time we talked, um, we talked about health disparities and the fact that there was a lot of different disparities. Uh, we mentioned disparities like um, infant mortality and cancer and health disparities associated with dementia, health disparities associated with um, all kinds of, of various uh, diseases and, uh, you know, healthcare issues. And so I said I would talk a bit this time about why they exist. And I think I'll just tell you right now, the majority of health disparities, although they talk about their they're caused by social determinants of health, we know that all of that <clears throat> can be reduced to and circles all the way back around to the racism that exists in this country. So just having said that, I'll, I'll go forward here just to talk a bit about why there are health disparities in the healthcare delivery system. So let me go back first and talk about disparity and how we defined it. So the key words in defining disparity has to do with differences among people and populations. There's a difference between one population as it relates to a diff different population. There's also inequities involved. Inequities must be considered when you're thinking about disparity. And the other couple of words that are very key to health disparity is unavoidable, or no, let me say it like this, avoidable <clears throat> differences, avoidable disparities, unfairness, unjust situations. So when you think about disparity, you're talking about some uh, unfair situations, some unjust conditions that exist, some differences between various populations. So, and we know there's a lot of, lot of different disparities, but what I wanna focus on today is healthcare disparities. Okay. And before I talk about healthcare disparities in healthcare, I must say that we must think about the healthcare delivery system in the United States. Now, many people understand and know that we do have a system, but there's also those that believe that our system is broken. And I'm sure those individuals can attest to the fact that our system is broken. Now, the Affordable Care Act came along in 2010, which was supposed to fix some of the broken healthcare delivery system, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But it has been broken, and I would dare say to you that it still has its issues. Now, it's the best healthcare delivery system in the United States, the best in the world, they say, but it's the best system in the United States if you can afford it. That is key. If you can't afford it, then the best system in the world in the United States doesn't mean anything to a person who cannot afford it. And that is what's key about our system. That is where we get into healthcare disparities because the system isn't quite like it should be. Matter of fact, there was a phrase coined by an individual whose name I can't think of right now, but I use it a lot. America's healthcare delivery system is based on incremental tinkering. Our system is a system of incremental tinkering. Now, why do I say that? Well, I say that because the way it operates in general, there's lots of grants initiated from the federal government based upon a particular illness or a particular uh, situation is going on at the time. So they'll give some money for AIDS back in the day. You remember that they'll give some money for cancer to study that and there's resources for that. Then there may be some resources for infant mortality. There may be some resources for uh, just anything you can think of that comes up and becomes popular. Then the federal government will provide a certain amount of money to address that need. And so that's why it's called a broken system that involves incremental tinkering. Now, the latest incremental, uh, I guess, grant sources that have been given out had to do with uh, those who were uh, uh, had the disease or, or had been 
I guess, affected by the uh, coronavirus. So there's lots of, of, of money that has been distributed lately under the CARES Act to take care of that particular issue. But now, back to the healthcare del delivery system in general and talking about health disparities. Uh, let me say that the system does consist of lots of uh, hospitals, nursing homes, home health agencies. You've got physicians' offices all throughout the, the country. You've got specialists uh, like you got medical doctors and you got specialists like OBGYN or eye doctors. You got subspecialists for urology and other parts of the body. Again, if for every part of the body, there's some specialist that's available to take care of that part of the body. So it's a robust uh, delivery system and uh, you have the best people working in it. And so it's a great system. Now, part of the system that I want to talk about today as it relates to health disparities has to do with Medicaid and Medicare. So I need to give you a definition of Medicaid and Medicare. But before I do that, let me go back. The hospitals and the physician's offices and all the other healthcare delivery system pharmacies and all, they uh, submit bills to insurance companies in order to get reimbursed for the services that they provide. So it's basically a system based upon profit, okay? You provide a service and then you submit a bill and then you paid for the service that is provided. Now, Medicaid and Medicare is the government's system of providing services for those who cannot afford. Let me give you some specifics. Medicare specifically is a US government program of hospitalization, insurance and voluntary medical insurance for persons aged 65 and older for certain, and for certain people who are disabled, okay? Medicare, if you're 65 and older, you're eligible to receive med Medicare, and that will provide you with uh, some hospitalization services and some primary care services. Also, if you're disabled, and specifically I'm familiar with kidney disease, if you have that, then you also are eligible for Medicare. Medicaid. The legal definition of Medicaid is that it's a program of medical aid designed for those unable to afford regular medical care and financed by both state and federal governments. Now, this began in 1965 as part of the Social Security Act, just like Medicare began in, in 1965. So the Medicaid program is funded by both state and federal. Federal provides most of the money for the Medicaid program. And then the state, each state provides uh, money for uh, the program in its state. And unfortunately, each state has different sets of criteria for eligibility and different services that they provide. So again, it leads itself to sort of a, a broken system that it is not uniform across all states. Now, Medicaid and Medicare are very important to those who don't have any insurance. And when you don't have insurance and you're poor, then you are among a particular disparity as it relates to income and economics. So let's talk about Medicaid expansion. Now back in 2010, 10 years ago, during the Obama administration, there was the Affordable Care Act that finally got passed that introduced the uh, ACA, the expansion of Medicaid is how it's referred to. So during that time, insurance companies, many in the healthcare delivery system fought against uh, the uh, Affordable Care Act. Matter of fact, the Republicans are specifically uh, identified as those who absolutely did not want the Affordable Care Act. Insurance companies and pharmaceutical companies and others fought against it. Matter of fact, during the height of the argument, as much as $700,000 a day was spent fighting against the Affordable Care Act. However, it finally got passed in 2010 and has been in existence since that time. And of course, the Republican legislature has been fighting against it every year since it's been enacted. Now, let me tell you about the, the, the expansion and what it's all about. So, the Medicaid expansion 
provided for, uh, you know, health care uh, for all people who uh, needed to come to get primary care. And just because it was called Obamacare, many people didn't want to participate in it. Matter of fact, some people said they were they were interested in the Affordable Care Act and wanted to receive it, but they didn't want Obamacare, which says something about their thinking and what their research might have been. So let me say that there was 12 states after 10 years that still do not have Medicaid expansion. And if you don't have Medicaid expansion, that means that a certain group within your state are at a disadvantage in terms of health care. There's a disparity that gets created because if they had expanded Medicare, there's primary care services uh, that uh, are, are provided. There's uh, lots of benefit uh, to that service. Now, let me just tell you that the states that have not expanded are Wyoming, South Dakota, West Wisconsin, Kansas, Texas, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. Now these mostly are Republican states. They're also Southern states. And so it, it, it's political. It's not just the social determinants of health that creates the disparity, but it is also the political determinants of health that creates a problem for people. And we can't overlook, overlook this fact. Uh, Nebraska implemented it uh, just two years ago and still there's issues being worked out in terms of uh, how it uh, how it will play out in this state. And let me say this, the states that have refused, they're doing a disservice to their, their patients and their people because the federal government will pay for 90% of the cost of providing uh, Medicaid to its population. The expansion would be paid for by the federal government up to 90%. States only have to pay 10%. Now, what this does, if they participate, in, increases billions of dollars to the economy. It makes the, the people healthier. Uh, it makes the poor uh, less uh, dependent on um, other sources that don't include the healthcare delivery system at all. And so it's a problem. The other statistic here is that the two largest states, Florida and Texas, uh, I think about 60% of the uninsured in those two states are people of color. So once again, it creates a disparity among that group. And as long as they do not participate, they're creating a health disparity for that group of people, uh, for their state. They're uh, not taking advantage of the increased economy that could take place as a result of participating in the expansion. So, that's what I wanted to talk about today uh, to give you a greater insight into what health disparities is all about. And uh, I welcome you to think about that. Think about that. It is a moral issue many times when we have disparities. Again, talking about the unfairness, the unjustness, um, it's a moral issue. And so, as you think about disparities going forward, just look to where the unjustness takes place. Just look to where the unfairness takes place. Just look to where people have been discriminated against. And finally today, I just wanna leave you with a comment about the COVID-19 pandemic, which is still with us. It is still with us. So I want to say, control your destination, take the vaccination, again, People, control your destination. Take the vaccination. Thank you. This has been Your History and Health Starts First with Dr. Richard Brown. If you would like to make suggestions, email us at ewcfacts at gmail.com. That's ewcfacts at gmail.com. This has been an EWC Communication production.